Can knowledge ever be a bad thing? I don't think so. What about actions that knowledge takes us to? Do you think that Oppenheimer, when the bomb went off, and he said, I am become death, destroyer of worlds, do you think he perhaps questioned for a moment whether the knowledge they achieved that led to the creation of the bomb perhaps should have been left undiscovered? Do you know what he said in response to those kinds of questions? Yes. He said, because people said, do you, have you usurped the power of God? Have you? And he said, if God didn't want this power to be there, he shouldn't have put it in the atom in the first place. Kind of an interesting <laughs> point, I think. Well, what what he's saying is that the world is accessible to us. So would you say, don't smelt the ore and make iron and make a sword out of it because you could cut yourself? Back then, that's what you would, that's the counterpart statement from the Iron Age. And if you were around back then, you'd be sitting in this chair saying, don't make the sword because you'd unleash evil on the world. Okay, I'll, I'll step back from don't make the sword. How about don't lick the flagpole in February? <laughs> yeah, that, you will learn something. You will learn something, but at a price, Neil. That'd be data. It's a data cost. It, it is. Yeah. There's a data cost for that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Also, Adam and Eve. They ate of the tree of knowledge of, knowledge. of good and evil, yeah. and they paid a price. Yeah. So God does put things into atoms he doesn't want us to know about. <laughs> yeah. However, I think yes. I don't want to blame the knowledge. I want to blame the behavior of people in the presence of the knowledge. So maybe we need better knowledge management. Do you think that scientists go, you can applaud him, he's the, he's the, he's the hero. Well, how about, how about this? Do you think that scientists should be allowed to do anything they can? I heard a big no over <laughs> Someone just said no. You know, uh, people made fun of him for doing this, but uh, during one of President Bush's State of the Union speeches. Bush one or two? Uh, Bush two. Mm -hmm. Um, he said uh, we have to, he spoke about, he warned against man-animal hybrids, okay? And a lot of people, like me, made fun of that by showing pictures of like Senator Alligator Man going, boo, boo, yay man-animal hybrids. And, but if scientists could make man-animal hybrids, wouldn't they? There are scientists who want to make man-animal hybrids. Should we make Man-animal hybrids, I ask you, Senator Tyson. <laughs> I have, there, should there be any limits like that? I think there's some creepy things about that, and I've met some scientists who, who would think that'd be an intriguing thing to do. Yes. Okay? Um, so I, I think we as a society, as a, as, a dem, as a democracy, what we should do is come to some understanding of what the prevailing social mores are. And no, science should not cross those barriers. And, not, and by the way, scientists are often ones to try to prevent that. Einstein among them, for example. He didn't want to make the bomb after he first told Roosevelt he should make the bomb. He changed his mind because his conscience, his moral conscience, descended upon him. Scientists are not without moral code here. So as a culture and as a society, we decide what should be the prevailing cultural mores, and I think we should all be beholden to those. What do you think of the portrayal of scientists uh, in movies? Because often, often, for instance, the scientists who make um, uh, the Terminator, they're the bad guys. Scientists lead us to the Terminator, or they create the superbug that wipes out the world, or, or they uh, enrage the monster at the bottom of the sea. When you part the curtains and, and at the bottom of all of that, there's a politician funding that research. <laughs> working again? It is? No. no, it's not. He says yes, you say no. Yeah, we got it. We're getting, we're getting bad data. <laughs> just to... We're good. That was good. That's good. You're good. Oh, yeah. You're good. You're good. <laughs> so scientists don't lead marching armies. Scientists don't invade other nations. Scientists, yes, we have scientists who, who invented the bomb. 
Yes, but somebody had to pay for the bomb, and that was taxpayers. That was war bonds. There was a political action that called for it. So everyone blames the scientists. We are collectively part of a society that is passing, that is, that is, that is using or not using to its benefit or to its detriment the discoveries made by science. And at the end of the day, a discovery itself is not moral. It's our application of it that takes that, that has to pass that test. Would you agree that there's a, there's a distrust of science on a certain level in our country? I mean, unless it's, you know, going to grow my hair back. Yeah, the right. science... Or science, do other things to your anatomy, yes. Right, exactly. Yes. Science, exactly. Yeah. Science, I've gotten those emails. Science... <laughs> science is sometimes distrusted because it is, it is more complex than the average person can understand. I think that is the core of it. It's distrusted not because of what it can do, but because of what it because people don't understand how it does what it can do. And that, that absence of understanding or misunderstanding of the power of science is what makes people afraid of it. And so I remember back when they first split the atom. You know, shouldn't split the atom or shouldn't. I mean, that, you, you hear this at every discovery that happens in science. There's a mystery to it. For example, irradiated foods. In France, they call it frankenfood, all right? Which is kind of a cute word when you think about it. Yes. But it makes food last longer, and you're healthier for it. You don't get sick from it, and so for, from it turning bad. In fact, NASA does it all the time. NASA can make a slab of meat. You wouldn't necessarily put this in your refrigerator, but NASA can make a slab of meat that'll last 30 years. I tasted it. And? <laughs> Delicious? No, it was, you know, there's some, res it, it remind some restaurants food rem reminds me of what that tasted like. But I'm just saying that just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's bad for you. Go figure out how it works. That's why we need a scientifically literate electorate so that when it, we go to the polls, you can make an informed judgment and you can draw your own conclusions rather than turning to a particular TV stations to have your conclusions handed to you. Now, uh, you know Arthur C. Clarke's... Comedy Central accepted. Exactly. Okay. You, you know Arthur C. Clarke's fa uh, famous uh, dictum about sufficiently advanced technology. Yes, it is. Arthur C. Clarke had several um, uh, uh, laws of yes. culture and, and the world, one of which was any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, if something gets too complex for the average person to understand... It's magic. It's, it's like, magic. And you have powers that I don't trust, because I don't know what you're going to do with it next. Whereas if you understood how it worked, you'd say, hey, give me one of those. I mean, that's how, that's how that would work. That's how that, that's how that plays out. Do you think that's where the debate over... I think that's where the debate over um, evolution and creation science comes, is that the complexity of evolution is so grand 